reversed. Greetings, I'm Shad. And recently, United Cutlery has sent me a couple of things to take a look at. And when they offer something like that, I'm like, hey, I love swords. Send me as many swords as you like. It's not a paid review, uh, but they did send it to me for free. So bear that in mind with any things I have. This is the thing though. I actually wasn't expecting this to be too good, all right? Having said that though, United Cutlery has impressed me specifically with this. I bought this one out of my own money, no review or recommendation, just to actually see how good it was. It's the United Cutlery Combat Commander Gladius. I've already done test cutting with it. This, this really impressed me. So honestly, United Cutlery have uh, been making some pretty good stuff. Uh, and that is separate to review. That was just honest thing. And so this is uh, their Honshu series broadsword. A little bit more about just broadsword a bit later, but the Honshu series is specifically uh, combat ready, like battle ready, as, as the saying goes. First review things, this sticks in the sheath a lot. It's like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> so there is that sticking in the sheath, but it's high carbon steel. And so this is made to be serious stuff, proper temper on that. Look at, look at that, okay? So this is a very real sword because United Cutlery might be known for some of their wall hangers. They're the ones that make the uh, official Lord of the Rings replica swords. I got one of those to have a look at as well, but this isn't a wall hanger. This is made to be combat ready and we are gonna take a good look at it. Now, broadsword is a, an anachronistic term. It's not what this type of sword would have been called in the period. In the period, it would have just been called sword, or more specifically, which you might notice, a bastard sword. If this, any category that this sword would more likely or logically fall into, it is most definitely a bastard sword. More a bit about that in a second, but I'll just quickly finish what I'm saying about the broadsword category. That term has really evolved. So even though it wasn't used often in the, in the medieval period, in the Renaissance, there was a term for broadsword, which was a Scottish basket hilt broadsword, but it's evolved so much that everyone's just using broadsword to basically mean a broad bladed sword. And if any sword does qualify to be a, a bit more broad bladed, this one very well much does. I like it. it's much broader in the base compared to the tip. And so, yes, you could call it a broadsword or a medieval broadsword, just so I know which period you're talking about. Purists like me wouldn't get so upset when we hear broadsword and we think, well, that's a Renaissance sword. But a medieval broadsword, I think, fine, let's just accept it, we'll move on. As I mentioned, this is actually, more specifically, a bastard sword. Bastard sword is the in-between sword of length between the one-handed arming sword and the two-handed longsword. But what's interesting about this one is that the blade length actually might be just as long as a standard arming sword blade length. Let's compare. Yes, this is long enough for a bit to be like one-handed arming sword, but the thing that makes it a broadsword is of course the handle length. So one of the more stereotypical and more accepted definitions of bastard sword is a sword that can be absolutely used in one hand, all right, but has a handle long enough to be used in two and uh, qualifies for that as well. And so just to compare this to a dedicated long sword, this is what we see here. Long sword has a very dedicated two-handed grip. It is longer. And in terms of handle length, that's what you get right there. But also, have a look at the blade width. Again, <laughs> the blade width at the base is almost twice as wide as this long sword. For that reason, I think, okay, you could probably get away with calling this a broadsword. You know, it's broader. And it's not because it's just used by women a lot, but uh, it's because of width, not, not, not broad. Used. Anyway, is that term even useful in these days? It's a good looking broad, don't you think? <laughs> All right, let's do a weight comparison between a standard arming sword with this bastard sword, essentially. Broadsword, bastard sword. So I bought this because it was actually very representative of a standard European arming sword, okay? It's made to be used in one hand. It's not unwieldy. And so I forget the exact weight. 1.12. 1.12 kilos. Now for the bastard sword. 1.6. I was not expecting that. It's actually closer to 1.7. Wow, this is surprisingly heavier, but it doesn't feel heavier. That's really weird. Okay, this is much heavier than I was expecting because when you hold it, it's surprisingly well balanced. And it must be because of the extra handle on the pummel. The point of balance is only an inch down. 
and it barely even passes the top of the cross guard here. Is that why it feels so much lighter? This is surprising. Look at the difference. Point of balance on this is nearly four inches probably down there. Like we're looking at nearly 12 to 15 centimeters point of balance there compared to point of balance here. And by the way, this is 1060 high carbon steel, says it on the blade. That is remarkable. That's like seven centimeters down. And as a result, it, I, I did not think this would be 1.7 kilos. Wow. Uh, that means that's heavier than this long sword even. Let's just weigh this one quickly because I think this is 1.2, 1.3 kilos. 1.2 kilos, I guess so. I mean, I'm trying to do a, just a weight test. It's about the same. I'm genuinely surprised because when you pick this up, you can feel the weight but the balance made me assume that it was much lighter than what it actually is. So they, this, that does mean this is far heavier for a one-handed sword than you would ideally want. Yet the balance in it makes it seem very, very like usable. You know, like, I am genuinely surprised about this because this is the thing, right? If I saw this online and it listed a 1.7 kilo weight category for something this size, I would have looked over it. I was like, not a chance, way too heavy for one handed sword. And I guess that's my own bias because holding it, it does not feel like it's 1.7 kilos. The balance on this, as I showed you, is remarkable. Maybe the extra weight is coming from the heftier pummel. If you took that off, would that shed almost like 0.2 to 3 of a kilo? But then it would be far more top heavy. I'm in a bit of shock. Like, this would be a very usable one handed sword still, you know. With a shield, absolutely. You do feel that extra drag though. So you would probably want a bit of extra strength. I would get that finger over a bit more to get the additional leverage I want. But this is the thing, I look at this, this is not an unwieldy sword as a result. I'm genuinely surprised. Of course, when you do use it in two hands, ah, well then it's just cake. What's weird is this is still heavier than my long sword. By, by not an insignificant margin. <laughs> I, there we go. I, let me just go through some of this. Like there, there. One of the disadvantages, of course, using a two-hand is reach. But if you wanted the versatility where you could do one-handed attacks and then switch to two, you get it. Comparing it to this one, I mean, this sword is made to be quick and lively because it is just so well balanced, but it is made to be. There are many long swords, dedicated long swords, that easily reach the 1.7 to even two kilo mark. And so what's really gonna be the deciding factor for this one to justify its lack of reach is gonna be cutting power. And we'll, ha we'll have to see how well it does. I suspect it's gonna perform well just by the weight of it, the design, I also think it's probably gonna cut pretty decently down towards the tip as a result. So we will find out. Before we go and do some test cutting, let's take a closer look at some of their features, the fit and finish. So one of the things that I don't like is this kind of modern tactical grip that they have here. It's one of the features of the Honshu series, though there are uh, other Honshu branded blades that are gonna be having uh, a more historically either wood or leather wrapped handle, which is good. But one of the uh, kind of things that saves it is that this is clearly removable. If you see the Allen key kind of connections here and here, I'm actually gonna experiment removing this and putting on my own wooden handle. I have a channel where I experiment with projects like that called the Shadlands, go check it out if you're interested. We already have projects cleaning up Boromir, making new things, make, getting myself new, you know, uh, chain mail and everything that one's out, check it out, cool, fun video. The lady helped me out with all that, and this would probably be another project that I'd be very interested in. So I do appreciate that they made them more easily removable. I wonder if they did that as like an acknowledgement that, hey, we know some people might not like the handle, but if it doesn't bother you, I mean, the grip, like, let me take my glove off, just to make sure I'm not over-exaggerating, but I've already held this single-handed. I don't like this diamond pattern here. When you grip it tight, you can feel those kind of diamond edge points digging into the skin a bit, which is not comfortable, honestly. So, I, look, I actually hate this grip. I will try and replace it though. Of course, the discomfort of the grip is not even noticeable with gloves on. Um, 
Other things, fit and finish. The finish and lines on the cross guard, really, really clean. Like, let's take a close look. See how precise this cross guard is? And the central ridge here on the cross guard adds, honestly, a beautiful little flare of embellishment that adds to the look. It's very tight. It's not as tight as you would see on the highest end sword. See the kind of gap here on the cross guard where the blade fits it. And you can see that they've filled it with kind of like epoxy resin. Some of the epoxy is coming out right on the edge here. So it's not a flawless finish. There's a bit of dirt and grime on the blade, but that's just from shipping and stuff. So let me clean it off and we should get a close up of the blade. So now that I've cleaned up the blade, you will see that it's got double fullers going down. These fuller lines are gorgeous. We are looking at very, very precise. They do not wander. They are straight lines all the way down. So that type of finish on the blade is, is flawless, honestly. I, I, I cannot see a single, single floor on the fuller line or the central line as well. And the edges. So big compliments there. The pummel comes with uh, not peened, it is uh, Allen key. I know it's not historical, but I've had a number of swords that the hilt assembly gets loose after use and either you have to learn how to re it to tighten it, but if you've got an Allen key, you can just tighten it right here and it just uh, like adds more uh, maintenance ability to the sword without needing to go to greater trouble. That I do like. So outside of that, with the minor flaws I mentioned here, it is still pretty tight. And overall, with the handle connecting to the cross guard and pummel, it's actually a, a mostly very clean fit and finish, which uh, is appreciated. And I do got a good impression, but like, and you know, just that bit of epoxy right there. Can I like get that out? It's not a terrible thing. And you do have to look pretty close to see the epoxy resin in there. But if you're looking at the very, very best um, quality swords you can get on the market, usually this fit right here is much tighter. The thing is though, this is a more affordable range sword. And in terms of quality for the price range, look, I have to say at the moment, I'm extremely impressed. It's on the heavier end, but the fact that it feels so functional while being so heavy shocked me. Let's actually see how well it cuts. A couple of quick items I want to address before we dive into the test cutting is as I look really closely to this, I don't think it has a distal taper. I think it's just as, uh, wide down there as it is here and if it does only by half a mil maybe mil at max dis tapering on this plane because uh, as I look it, it doesn't look like it has any but the weight reduction then is because of the profile tapering the heavy profile tapering that we see from the base of the blade down to the point is what gives it the, the point of balance because remember the point of balance is like right there I would almost say additional distal tapering would make it, would that would it be better or worse because that could affect cutting performance. The other thing that I want to mention, you might have noticed how similar this looks to a sword you might have seen in a film. I think it's very clear that this is patterned after Boromir's sword from Lord of the Rings. Have a look. If we just get an image up to the side, this, this is pretty much Boromir's sword, but functional. This is a high carbon, functional, combat ready sword with a crappy grip. <laughs> but like I said, United Cutlery, they're already making a version of this with, with an authentic, you know, wood or leather wrap, which would be so much better. The other thing that I wanted to test, is remember how I said it sticks in the, uh, in, the, in the scabbard? I like that they gave it its own uh, sword carriage or sword frog, but with how much it sticks, I wanna see how easy it is to draw from this sheath because that could be a big issue. So it sits in the belt, perfectly balanced. This is a decent balance. I'll probably put it down to about there. You know, that one of the issues with sword frogs or carriages is, is this swaying around. It's not as secured as other methods, but my, yeah, comfortable sitting at a good angle to grab. Issue is if I wanna draw it, it's not coming out by itself and so because it sticks so much and like holy crap when I say it sticks I, I, I legitimately can't get it out I don't know what they've done with this sheath like that that is not good for a quick draw I pulled the sword from the sheath am I the true king look I know it's not a stone but it's about just as hard I wonder if I can like try and loosen it jam a tool in there and then because even letting it fall down naturally okay but as soon as you push it in and get it secure 
Grab it! You want Oz? Come and have a. All right, all right, ready? Come and try and pull out my massive pummel. Look, you need to get a good grip around my on the sh on the shaft and pummel. Okay. okay. That's tough. That's tough. Like that sticks yeah. really hard. Like, say say to the mic. Like how how much did that stick? Uh, and here you had to tug on that pretty darn pretty yeah, forcefully to, to get it to come out. Yep. I had to tug it. Not a quick draw method. I wonder if you can oil the sheath or something. Get it. Will it get easier over time? Maybe. Maybe just repeated sheathing and pulling will lessen this issue. Ah, uh, maybe. Maybe. May, look. Maybe it's because it's so new. It seems to be getting easier. Before we get to cutting, I just want to test the edge. The factory edge out of the box isn't terrible, isn't terrible, but we're not talking about razor sharp here. Like this will not cut hair, okay? So you can put apply a decent amount of pressure, but I mean, it will actually slice. Let me show you in terms of how sharp it is. It will slice into wood, okay? Not very, not very great. So we'll see how well it cuts water bottles. All right, so I'm gonna do a low powered cut, something really casual, simple, gonna come down on an angle, just like so, okay? Uh, all right, not too bad. All right. That was actually a crap cut. That was awful. Well, so far it hasn't failed at cutting through. I'm not seeing very clean slices though. I was getting mixed results from water bottle. Um, let's do some cutting against wood and see how well it performs. We've quickly come here to the Shadlands. It's a bit windy, but I think the auto should be all right with the lapel mic to do some almost destructive test cutting. Swords aren't made to cut wood, all right? This isn't recommended, but this is just to test actually how strong the edge is uh, to see if the edge on it is adequate to get some decent cuts in comparison to, uh, I mean, I've cut other things like with my machete and stuff, so I'll get a bit of a baseline in comparison. It got through water bottles easily enough, but I wouldn't say uh, prettily, it was a bit ragged. And look, that could be user error, so this is gonna help me gauge if it was more user error or just wood. And so right here, let's do some just short ones. I mean, they're cut in a, like a, a chunk. It's holding together all right. So, and so by the way, this is gum. Gum, when it dries out, actually becomes pretty hard. This is not a soft wood. Uh, and uh, if we come around here just to see the cuts I'm, I'm do putting into this, so. So. It's holding up to some abuse. Uh, it's not doing deep cuts. My machete would do a bit better, but uh, let's let's try this uh, stump over here. We can get an idea for the spring on it. Look at that. Ooh. This is a a very dried out like it's not rotted easy cut this is actually really solid and hard like if i what's interesting is i'm coming in on an angle but the grain of the wood is forcing it down ways so if i come down like that that one's pretty good Come around here. Have a look at that. I am cutting into a split already. So it's because I actually found a bit of a rotted part, but I'm interested to see how deep I can get down on that part. Ooh, onto the side. So I've been mistreating this blade, not being nice to it at all. No discernible damage on the edge. No warping or twisting on the uh, curve. And we are seeing the temper on this. Do you see how much this wobbles? Let me do a side strike and look at the wobble. Look at that. That is indicating 
a very, very good temper and spring on this thing. Tip retention. So with how flexible this is, I am interested to, to see how well the temper does because it, it, is, it is curving when I thrust into this. Like, look at that. That's a pretty wide thing. I think we might've got the slightest bending at the tip. So we, can you see right here? Can you see a slightest bend there? Right at the tip. Tea tree is much greener. Should be much easier to cut. I'll do some small ones. Yeah. Not the best, honestly. For Greenwood, uh, not performing brilliantly against the tea tree. And it should, a tea tree should be much, much easier. I can get through some of these ones with my machete in a single cut easy. I wanna test it against this bit of one right here. My machete could get through it in maybe three to four cuts. Let's see what this can do. Close. That's basically through now. Still 12 cuts to get through. 12 cuts to get through, it's pretty poor. Some of those cuts were poor on my behalf. Some I think were actually the saw just not performing as well as it could. Got some nice smooth cuts here, there. Didn't go in very far. It's not a machete, it's not made to cut wood, but could do better in my opinion. So after all that um, abusive testing, no discernible edge damage at all. You can see the wood kind of scrapes, but I think they would buff out pretty easily, honestly. And no edge damage. Uh, so that's a very good sign. That's, a, that's, a, that's a one extra point in favor for the, uh, the steel quality, heat treatment on it. Um, and look, like we gave it some good knocks. Not a single, not a single bit of damage. To even go further, let me chop into some of this wire. Let's really see if we can damage this thing, this sword. Ready? All right, so chopping in that enough to actually bust the wire, not chop through it. And you see a tiny bit of metal scraping there. That's as much damage chopping into a steel wire fence. Very minimal damage, barely even noticeable. So again, that's a thumbs up for the strength of the steel, I'd say. It has loosened a bit, see this? Do, we, do you see, yeah. do you see, this is the tiniest bit loose now? You can hear it? So it has loosened up. Uh, pro, I would even say considerably from that abusive testing, especially from the pummel. The more I do it, the more loose it's becoming. Let's tighten that and see if we can tighten the whole thing and it won't go apart. Well, this should be, an easy fix. Just tighten this like so. <laughs> Perfect. Like there is no looseness in this at all. Okay, so cutting performance was a bit underwhelming. Uh, it's not razor sharp, so please do keep that in mind as a factor. Uh, things that did really impress me was the temper and flex on it. It performed really well with the spring flex on this. Uh, so I actually give that full, full marks. It sprung back on some pretty heavy, heavy hits with only maybe the slightest, the slightest bend up here, but you can barely even see it. Can you see it? I can only just notice it. So uh, overall, not a flawless sword, but still really, really impressed me. I thought it would be far worse. That was my bias going in. Uh, the fact that the balance is so darn nice, 
in this. Like, this is a 1.7 kilo sword, and for one-handed use, like, look at this. Like, this is not an awkward, cumbersome sword. For a 1.7 kilo one-handed sword, you do that. And then, of course, you get the two hand strikes. There are some huge bonuses and strengths to this one with some drawbacks, but for the price range, like if you're interested in it, I would give it a thumbs up, a recommendation. And as I mentioned, I'm not a fan of the grip. Maybe I'll explore replacing that, but United Cutlery are making a Honestry version of this with a more traditional one. So if that's an issue, well, check out the one that's gonna be more traditional, but there's more benefits to it than negatives overall. And, uh, and there we go, that's my review of the uh, Honshu Broadsword by United Cutlery. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed. And of course, hope to see you on the next video here on Shadowversity. So until that time, farewell.